Hello everyone, I'm Marty Pospisil and welcome to my May 2024 market update. Super excited, the data came in really early uh, today, so my team was able to compile all of the data for the presentation. So we're getting this out to you uh, much earlier than normal in the beginning of the month and uh, some, uh, some good stuff to cover today. A little bit more of the same in the market, couple of shifts and changes which I'll cover, but let's jump right into it so I can bring you up to date. Appreciation is still happening on all product. Apart from condos got a little bit quieter over the last month, um, typically between one and 2% for townhomes and detached houses. We'll look at that particularly on my table. So detached houses year over year, the activity was negative the previous months in terms of activity year over year. We're just breaking into the positives now, up 0.7%. For detached houses, again, this is in Greater Vancouver. Benchmark price year over year, we're 6.3% higher than where we were this time last year. And last month, a jump in houses of 1.6%. Actual a solid appreciation we're looking at now for detached and townhomes. Uh, and you can see that here in the townhome category. We've got 16% more activity year over year from this time last year. Now remember, this time last year, um, in 2023, we're right at the peak of that spring market. Then all of a sudden, inflation started to hit and the Bank of Canada started to raise the rate, so that activity dropped. So we are comparing now to that peak market of last year. So that's interesting that we're actually up in activity in all three categories from this time last year. Benchmark price year over year for townhomes and, um, and half duplexes, we're up 4.3% year over year and 1.3% from last month. So good appreciation overall. Apartments, we had an uptick in inventory and the demand was still about the same. Um, so we're seeing an increase in activity year over year, 0.2%. Um, price, 3.2% from this time last year, very healthy, but only 0.1% jump in pricing this past month for apartment condos. So pretty healthy stats, again, generally between one and 2%. What's hot and what's not? Again, as you all know from my regular viewers, um, the metric I use to track the market activity is the sales ratio. And basically, all the sales ratio is, is the absorption rate of product that sells in a given month. And I separate out the product and the area so you can see um, what's hot and what isn't. If we're less than 11% absorption rate or sales rate per month, we're in a buyer's market, there's downward pressure on pricing. If we're between 12 and 20% absorption rate, we're in a balanced market, it's not favoring the buyers or the sellers. But if we break past that 21% barrier, we break into seller market territory, upward pressure on prices, multiple offers, a lot of exciting stuff happening there. Uh, and we've had a lot of that over the last couple of weeks. So um, let's jump into each category. Detached houses, Vancouver West Side. You can see from summer of last year, the activity was pretty slow. And then in spring, boom, it jumped up to 15%. Last month down a little bit to 13%. Where are we now? We are at 16%. So detached houses, sales ratio, up a tick from 13 to 16%. Um, which is exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing that activity increase and we are in solid balanced market territory. Now, condos and townhomes, we saw from last summer, we were in the high teens. In spring, it jumped into seller's market territory, 24, 26%. This past month, we are at 22%. So again, a little bit less activity in condos and townhomes. We see that attached market just got a little bit quieter, still in very solid seller's market territory um, for condos, townhomes, Vancouver West Side. So downtown, we separate that out. Again, last month we were at 18%. This month we are at 15%. And if you're interested in getting more details like the price bands, etc., just pop me an email. I can send you the detailed stats on that. But for condos, townhomes, downtown, we're in solid balanced market territory. So Vancouver Eastside detached houses, 
pretty quiet over the summer. In March, we jumped up to 17% activity. April, 20%. And this month, surprise, surprise, 24%. Houses on the east side have gotten very, very active. Mm. So, we see that strong sellers market territory for detached houses, Vancouver east side. Okay, condos, townhomes on the east side. Remember last summer um, was, was pretty active and then in the beginning of this year we were still in very solid sellers market territory at 28% last month and this month it is the same at 28%. But that is a pretty high number. Condos and townhomes on the east side are hot and there's not enough of them. So that puts us in solid sellers market territory. So overall, west side, the sales ratio is well into balanced and now has jumped into sellers market territory. And along the east side, you can see the categories now jumping into that sellers market territory. No surprise there. Um, all product across BC, you can see there's the band of balanced market just jumping into that seller's market territory across BC. So what's happening with all the prices? So if we look at the average MLS pricing across BC, we can see that peak we had in 2022, a dip down over COVID, a bit of a recovery last year, hyperinflation, and then a really strong recovery this spring across BC. And if we look at the average pricing in Greater Vancouver, you can see that jiggity jaggedy, that peak in 2022 for houses. We actually jumped back there last year. Then the hyperinflation really hit the housing um, uh, average pricing and now it's climbing back up. And that is the same, of course, for townhomes as well. And condos a little bit milder, but still a good recovery. So that's average pricing. If we look at the five year uh, housing price index trend, you can see there is the April 2022 peak that we saw for all product and then a dip down during COVID and then a pretty good strong recovery this spring on all product across the board. Forecasting, what is coming? What's gonna happen this summer? Well, no big changes, the drivers are the same. Consumer demand is strong. The buyers are buying. Again, there's three years of pent up demand that's taking place here. We've got two years of COVID, one year of hyperinflation, and the buyers are saying, hey, Tiff Macklin back east says he's lowering the rates this year. Let's get out there and buy, which has created a bit of a problem for him because um, that does impact the inflation rate, which again turns back and impacts the mortgage rate. So it's kind of a vicious circle and a constant game of back and forth and bluffing and threatening and then doing. It's quite interesting to watch. Tough job for uh, TIFF back east. But consumer confidence is up. Inflation is within that. Uh, interesting, we had a, a jump up in inflation. I'll get into that. But it's within the 2.3% range. So everybody's happy there. The cost of borrowing is starting to fall. It's transitioning now from terrible market deterrent to a transitioning phase. And soon you'll see that cost of borrowing drop even more. And the inventory levels are climbing, but not as fast as we need to to meet that demand. So there's the consumer, yay, out there buying, shopping, maxing the credit cards. Um, hopefully those rates will come down so they can pay them off. Um, and if you look at retail sales, we're seeing that activity is up. Employment is steadily increasing, so that's good news. And if we look at housing starts, the developers and builders um, compared to last year um, in Vancouver have actually passed last year's total. So people are start, they're actually building in Vancouver. Not the case in Victoria or Kelowna. Abbotsford is the case in Nanaimo. Um, so it's a bit sketchy in some areas, but unemployment is up a little bit in Canada at 6.1% 
and in BC at 5.5%. No dramatic changes, but a little increase. So if we look at inflation, there's our friend Tiff back east. He's holding that housing market in his hands. We had a jump up to 2.9%. Whoa, nobody really expected that. Why is that? Well, because a quarter of the headline inflation rate is devoted to housing costs. So the housing market has gone very active, as I predicted last year, for this year and through spring. It's extremely active, and that might be impacting not might be, actually is impacting that inflation rate. So that's a jump from 2.78 to 9. Uh, they're concerned, but they will likely drop the rate soon. They're under a lot of pressure to do that. And any rate cut, of course, would be the first in two years. So that's kind of interesting. And again, is that constant discussion about the real estate um, not really, well, Sorry, let me backstep. The monetary policy cannot control housing affordability. He's made that really clear. So he's trying to, if he had his way, he would separate out housing from the consumer price index, but it's still uh, something that has to be included. Uh, but he's saying, look, you can't control that. And there's only so much he can do by keeping those rates high. He really wants to lower them. But with that increased uh, um, um, inflation for housing that is impacting that inflation rate and as I said before that imp impacts the mortgage rate so it's all tied together it's quite and he looks very concerned there um, <laughs> but if you look at that consumer price index you can see from where we were remember we were at eight percent it's come way down just under three percent now of course at 2.9 so um, it's pretty good news we are in sync more or less with our neighbors, but the U.S. inflation rate's starting to climb at 3.5%. We don't want to get these numbers too far apart because that starts to cause inflation back here. There's various factors that tie that in that I covered in a previous update, um, but they are starting to climb. We jumped up a little bit at 2.9%. As I mentioned earlier, a quarter of the headline CPI or, or inflation is housing. So um, there is that impact on inflation from our hot housing market. So that's kind of interesting. So the cost of borrowing, again, uh, there's a consensus that the rates will fall quickly between 25 and 50 percent quickly. Well, nobody really knows, but maybe June, maybe July. And by the end of the year, boy, will we see uh, one and a half to one and three quarter percent drop? Maybe, hopefully, maybe that gets pushed into the new year of 2025, but we'll see. Now, here's the interesting part. Rates do impact the market. We all know that. And the reason that there is a limited inventory in various product categories in the market is because many of the current mortgage holders are holding a mortgage for their home at 2 to 3%. Uh, and they got those great rates from before. Now, if they refinance finance and do an upgrade to a house, they're jumping into a 4.88, 4.75 uh, mortgage rate. So their rates really jump up significantly. Maybe they're waiting for those rates to drop down closer to where they are in their existing mortgage before they jump. So, you know, if they're selling at 3% and buying at 5% mortgage rates, that's certainly going to affect their decision to sell. One of the factors um, that's controlling the limited inventory that's coming out. So mortgage rates are predicted to fall. We just don't know when and by how much, but there's the forecast. And that's supposed to start happening fairly soon. Uh, there's the fixed rate and the Bank of Canada overnight rate. But again, the big factors that I follow is the inventory levels. Because it's all economics 100, supply and demand. If the supply remains constant, the demand's high, of course we have increased pricing. That's just how it works. And if the inventory does start to increase significantly, catch up to demand, those price increases are going to start to level off. So let's look at where we're at in um, Vancouver West Side for houses. You can see the inventory for all the houses for sale on the West Side last month was 496. That's jumped up to 567. It's jumped, but not enough. The demand is higher. So we've had a slight increase. If we look at the West Side inventory levels for condos and townhomes, it went from 700 to 879. Big jump in attached condo inventory. That 
impacts the sales ratio and impacts the price growth. So they're all tied together. Let's look at inventory on the east side for houses. We went from 392 homes to 493 homes. But remember, we're in a superheated, high selling market in um, houses on the east side. And we, even though it's, it's that high, we still had an increase of 100 homes. So that's an insatiable market over there. East side condos and townhomes, not a big increase, 547 units to 606 units, slight increase in inventory. Normally we'll see this curve much steeper. So that inventory is holding back and one of the factors could be the rates as I mentioned earlier. Active listings across BC, you can see are increasing probably more significantly outside of Vancouver than in Vancouver because the in Vancouver curve for the inventory is not that high. If you break it down in the lower mainland for active listings, you can see there's an increase in the lower mainland here, probably the shallowest level. Kootenays are steeper. Uh, North, uh, um, Northern BC, very steep. Thompson, Okanagan, whoa! And Vancouver Island, almost vertical. Whew. Lot of inventory. So if you're buying in the island, um, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. You're going to have a good selection. A lot of clients that just sold their homes over the last couple of weeks are buying on the island. So good luck to you guys. Um, you're going to have some nice selection. So what's next for prices? That's what everybody's asking. Where are the prices going? Well, the unit sales are, of course, up. Everybody's running to buy their home. Um, and if you look at the overall forecast for pricing, this is interesting. Here's where we are in 2024 and the breakdown of pricing for all the different areas throughout BC, you can see 2025 is forecast to be an increase in activity and sales. So that's good news. And in conclusion, if we look at all the factors again, um, we know the market is impacted by mortgage rates, inventory and consumer confidence and demand. Inflation's already in the target range. That's good news. The Bank of Canada, we're just waiting for them to actually do it. They're hesitating because of that jump and because of real estate, but it's going to come and listings are coming in to provide that much needed inventory to meet the demand. Mortgage rates will begin to drop soon. Hopefully they'll drop this much by the end of the year. Um, uh, between 100 and 175 basis points and prices are increasing between 1 and 2 percent depending on the product and location. So 2024 continues to be a very active market with prices increasing and excellent buyer demand. That's my market update for May of 2024. I'm Marty Pospisil. Love getting your emails. Um, I'm getting very close, I think, to a thousand subscribers. So um, when I break that barrier, I'll certainly announce it. Very exciting. Um, you can watch my updates on YouTube, Facebook, and of course, Instagram. And I have the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google podcast. Thank you very much for watching. And the weather's great. Summer's coming. May is here. April showers are behind us. May flowers are going to come out. You enjoy them. Thanks for joining me.